All right, guys. So I've spent, by the way, hi. Um, I've spent the last maybe three hours creating an instructional video for you to watch about our um, upcoming activities for next week and your upcoming project that will flow out of that. Um, I cannot seem to get that video to upload to YouTube. I created it in um, iMovie and I um, have been trying for hours to get that uploaded. And so I'm at the point now where I think I need to just create this video link and um, see how it works out. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to share my screen and we'll go through some things together. Um, and I will show you the PowerPoint that I spoke about. I will show you the document that I will send out that you'll actually work on and then explain what it is that I uh, would like for you to work on while you're at home, okay? So let me go ahead and try to share my screen. Okay. All right, hopefully you can see that. This is where I was working in iMovie. Um, Right now, I am going to do, 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 go to the PowerPoint that I really, really, really wanted to talk about before I had some issues. All right, so let's see. Okay, hopefully that is clear for you. Okay, so what we'll be doing this week is I'm um, talking about installation art, okay? So if you guys are, you know, one of my students that are really big into taking notes, I am not going to require you to take any notes, okay? Um, you'll have access to this video and you should be able to replay it and watch it whenever um, you feel like it. So um, installation art, here's the definition that I have here and then I'm going to expound on that just a little bit. So installation art is art that is created, it's constructed, or it's literally installed in a specific location. Um, and a lot of times it incorporates the materials or the physical features of that particular site that it's located. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more um, about being installed into a location. And so at this point in the video, you can pause me and I want you guys to actually go check out these particular videos. Um, since this is a link, I don't think you'll be able to click the link, but please um, copy and paste it, write it down. But go take a look at these three YouTube videos. The first one and the last one are kind of like introductions into what installation art looks like. But specifically, the first one gives you. Um, a brief this, uh, idea of what that would look like if you were to do it. And then the second video is, it's very cute. It's a six year old and he's describing what public art is. And public art is that art you see when you walk downtown, like murals or the pillars that people have painted. Public art is like when you're passing the comer and there is um, a sculpture outside of it, but it's, you don't classify it as a sculpture because it doesn't look like a figure, but it's an object, but it's considered public art, it's considered an installation. Um, and same thing with UNF, some universities, they um, hire artists to create public art to put on their um, campuses, and that's considered an installation. And a lot of times the installation has a lot to do um, with the location that it's in. So, um, after you watch those videos, because you were supposed to pause me, yeah, and then you go back and um, now you come back to this point. So everybody's watched the videos, you have an idea of what installation art is, so every time I say it, you have this image in your head of what that is. So now you are taking a look at, um, you're taking a look at this picture that's in front of you. Okay, so, um, what you see right now, and I want you to do this with every image that I show you, I want you to pause for at least 10 seconds and look at it. Really look at it. Okay, so we're looking at this piece and what I see. This is what you're going to do. What I see right now is, and what I see when I look at this, I feel as though I'm in a room 
And I feel like something is trying to break into this space. And so what installation art does a lot of times is um, it takes advantage of the space and it causes the viewer to interact with the space around them differently than they would if the artwork was not there. So it almost looks like the, the wall has just been aged and stretched and all of that, but the artist has specifically, particularly have um, created this wall to look like this and you should ask yourself why okay so that's what you're doing you're doing a lot of what do I see and why did the artist do this so yes um, take a look at the wall there's a lot going on here and so when you walk into the room immediately your emotions should be engaged you should be thinking um, different questions it should prompt you to explore a little bit same thing here. So uh, what we see in front of us right now, take, take a, just 10 seconds to really focus in on what you see right now. Starting with the object on the left and then the object on the right. Okay, so the object on the left, I'm pretty sure if you're taking a really hard look at it, it's really literally engaging all of the space around it. It's engaging the ceiling, it's engaging the floor, it's engaging the middle of the room. And you have to wonder like what is going on here. Um, and so um, in some ways it looks as though something's coming out of the floor but it also looks like something's coming from the ceiling down to the floor. So you want to think about the materials that are being used. You want to think about what the artist is trying to achieve, what is going on in a lot of ways. Um, you can begin to engage with public art. Sometimes starts with the title of the artwork itself. Um, it gives us an idea of what the artist is trying to say. But as we scan here, what are we feeling? What are we thinking? What is the message? Okay, same thing with the artwork on the right. And remember that art installations, again, they literally take advantage of the site. It's site specific work. And so um, even with the dress on the right, this dress is floating. Um, it's doing something different in regards to taking up the space. And then we see the material it's as though it's disintegrating in front of us, but instead of falling to the floor, we see pieces of the dress look as though they're turning into butterflies and flying to the ceiling. So what is this artist trying to do right now? What are we supposed to be experiencing at this moment? What is that message? All right, so here we are. Um, we see another site-specific artwork, and I want you to think about the textures you see. I want you to think about the use of the space. I want you to think about movement. I want you to think about um, different elements and principles we've talked about in class, especially if you're in my seventh period. Um, but think about those different things, contrast, um, the use of contrast, the use of color. Um, think about the use of um, unity you know, um, the use of symmetry. Think about all these things as you're looking at this piece and then also think what is the artist trying to accomplish here? How am I supposed to engage with this space? How does this site-specific art make me feel? What do I think of it? Okay, so think about that for a few more seconds. It looks very stretchy from far away, but I bet if we were standing right up on it, we might feel differently about it. So even perspective, proximity of us being close to it or not close to it, um, looking at it from a photo actually doesn't do it any justice. And so site-specific art is meant to be experienced on the site, okay? So here we have more site-specific art installations and both of the artworks that we see in front of us take advantage of the site. Like if we were to step inside of the image on the left, we are in a room. And one of the first things you notice is, for me, the shadows. So the shadows are there. there there's a light placed inside of this mass amount of objects that are being suspended from the ceiling. But then 
all the other lights are turned off, this one light creates all these cast shadows all over the room. And so not only was there an artwork built to be suspended from the ceiling, which is taking advantage of the space that it's in, but the shadows also become a part of the artwork itself. And so when we're talking about an installation and we're talking about how we interact with it, this is meant to make us interact with the entire space in that room. And as far as the one on the right, it, it, it could stand alone without the building, but it's even more interesting to feel as though this mass amount of books are being purged from a window. And so taking advantage of the site, using the site to be a part of the artwork. So this challenges our idea of what art really is. So think for just a moment, when you saw all of the pictures that we've looked at so far, did you even think it was art? You know, it, it's very, it, it, it prompts you to really wonder what is the true definition of art and who determines what that is. Okay, so here's another, this is our last one. Um, and so what you see here, look around. Take about 10 seconds to look around. What is going on? So I definitely see boats but I see this huge webbed mass above the boats. And what do you see hanging from this red mass? See a bunch of keys. What does that mean? And so part of the reason why I want you guys to be experienced to installation art is because um, it's very easy to dismiss what we think is not art. Um, but a lot of this is conceptual. A lot of it has to do with the message behind what the artist is trying to achieve, okay? It's not so much a lot of times about aesthetics, beauty, what we see and how lovely and awesome it is. Sometimes it is the message that becomes the art, okay? So now you guys, <laughs> I believe in you and you are going to explore um, installation work on your own. And so uh, as you can see here are some artworks that have been created by students. Um, we have some bottles and we have some wire. Um, we have candy. I kid you not, that's candy down there. And then we have some other objects that were kind of put together and put on site. And so you don't need to overthink or um, feel as though this is something that's just out of your reach and so foreign. Yes, it is foreign, but now you know about it. You know it's a real thing. And so you are going to create your own installation artworks. And so um, I created an installation before out of cereal. I wrote a message, I did a drawing out of cereal. Don't, this isn't something that you cannot achieve. You can use anything in your kitchen, bathroom, whatever. On the right, you will see an installation that was created in a museum out of thousands of cups, cups, plastic cups, cheap plastic cups. So installations just, just make you experience the space differently, okay? So don't think that this is something that's just so hard and far-fetched. Far um, and one of the biggest things about installations is documenting the process. People want to see how you came from nothing to something with something that's just so out of this world, wouldn't have thought about it type of, you know. So we are going to talk about an artist um, this week. His name is Alejandro Duran, and he has a series called Washed Up. And so what he did, he took a lot of trash that flowed in from the sea um, onto a beach, and he collected that trash, he curated it, he um, washed it, and then he displayed it in different parts of that particular site um, that integrated these pieces of trash into the natural environment there. And so what you see in front of you are a bunch of shoots, but what he did was take toothbrushes and put them among the shoots so that they're sitting up just like the shoots. They're acting just like the shoots. And so um, he, this is what he does. He integrates this trash into this space where this trash was washed up. And there's a message behind what he's doing. 
part of that message is on the right of your screen where it says transforming a trashed landscape. So this location installation has to do with transforming what was a trash landscape into a landscape that speaks, okay? So Alejandro has also um, done other pieces. There's many, many, many on this website. So here's another one where he's taking a bunch of green bottles and he, this is another thing he does. He takes all the trash, he organizes them by color and then he integrates them in very specific ways in very specific areas so that they become a part of the land. And it looks great, but it speaks volumes. Same thing here, he organized a bunch of objects that were blue. And so these objects are, Basically, um, they're integrated into this seascape. You ever um, been to like a paint night or you've, you've seen a lot of sunset pictures and you always see the sky at the top and the water and then the beach, but then it's like, hey, where's the beach? The beach is covered in trash. And so it's, it's really interesting how he paints this portrait that looks so beautiful, but yet he's really giving us a very in your face type of message. And so he does the same thing here. So you guys, this is our artist, Alejandro Duran. Um, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna close PowerPoint and I'm gonna pull up the assignment that you guys are going to be um, emailed. Not that assignment, very, very sorry. That was from this week. Thank you to those who have sent that out to me. Um, here it is. Okay, so you guys, let me make it big, 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 big. All right, so we're gonna go to the first page. All right, so here's the same thing that was in the PowerPoint. So in the uh, worksheet packet that you're gonna receive from me, uh, there'll be an overview of Alejandro, uh, where he's from, a little bit about him. You're gonna complete activity one. Activity one has five questions. It's asking you what is going on here, talking about the picture that is above, the one with the toothbrushes. Uh, what do you see that makes you say that? What is the purpose or message of this installation? What is the artist trying to say? Guys, please make sure you answer both questions. Um, it looks like one, but it's two. Um, what makes you say that? So the what makes you say that is very important to me because I want to know your thought process as you're looking at the artwork. Also, how will you look at the world differently after viewing this artwork? And how does this have a lasting impact on you? Please answer both questions. They're both important. Here's a little blurb about our artist. Okay, so Duran was born in Mexico City um, and now based in New York. Um, through photography, installation, and video, his work examines the fraught intersections of man and nature, particularly revealing the pervasive impact of consumer culture on the natural world. So all that to say, like guys, we, we love buying things. We love having things. And it's so easy for us to drink a bottle of water and just toss it, you know? But what's happening is a lot of the stuff that we consume on a daily basis is actually affecting the world around us. And so he really wants to speak to that. Um, the next bullet says that he's passionate about bringing attention to the problem of plastic. So it's, um, it's making its way across the water. Okay, so activity two, you're gonna watch this TED talk up here. And then, and the TED Talk is also included on the Flipgrid. I'm not sure if that's going to work out this week, but if it does, you guys are actually going to respond to the prompt in um, Flipgrid. You're also going to watch it here. Um, and then here are some questions that you are going to answer. Um, what I need you to do is make sure you read the questions first. Um, get an understanding of what you need to be listening for, for sure. Um, you can pause the video as you need to and answer them. That's one way to handle it. Or read the questions before and as you're listening to the video, answer it. Okay, so activity three requires you, again, to um, do a few things. So you're going to investigate his photo series. So you're going to click on this link right here, and then you're going to go there and just look around. That's what I want you to do. Take a look however long you need to. Then you're gonna go to number two. Number two is asking you, 
how do the names of the art installations make the viewer think deeper about the meaning that the artist is trying to convey? So definitely look at the information that is listed with the photos that you're looking at. And then number three, research and find an artist who makes environmental art. So um, I'll throw a name out there. It's okay if you guys take it. But Andy Goldsworthy. Andy Goldsworthy is also an artist who focuses on environmental art. Then you're going to provide two to three pictures and a description of their work and reasons behind it, okay? So this part right here is not necessary, okay? Let me go on and say that. Um, they don't have to be from Nebraska or Colorado, but they can be from Florida. Awesome. All right, so here is where you're going to plan your own project. So uh, the first box will prompt you to think about um, an installation using recycled products. Um, if you are having a hard time with recycled products at this time, it is okay. I need you to email me. Let me know what your ideas are. What other installation art would you like to focus on? Would you have rules? Uh, would you that you develop? Uh, I don't know. Let me make sure that's clear. Would you have rules? Would you develop regarding what items you will use? Okay, so are you going to create your own rules regarding what you're going to make? Instead of me giving you a whole bunch of parameters about what you need to do and not do, this is your world. And so I want you to come up with your own installation piece. Tell me what you're doing and why you're doing it that way. What supplies do you need? So you are in charge. You are completely in charge of what you want this to come out like. Um, you are responsible though to co collect your own stuff, okay? So uh, the other thing that's very important for this is that you document your entire journey during this process, okay? So it says along your journey with this new artwork, take pictures. So if you have a phone, if you actually have a camera, whatever you use to document, uh, even if you wanna make little snippets of videos and send them in, do that. But I would love to see your process. Just like when you're in class with me and I walk around and I'm watching your process, this is showing me your process, okay? And then you're gonna do a reflection. How do you, what do you like about your work and what do you dislike? It's kind of like when we um, do our artist statement. So yes, you do need to specifically tell me what you like and what you dislike. And what I want to see, guys, please, um, please expound, explain a little bit. If you say you like it, tell me why. Don't do it in one sentence. Give me a few. Give me a paragraph. Um, if you don't like it, please tell me why you don't like it. Um, and remember, we always talk about what could we do differently. If you know what you could do differently or could have done differently, please do, please do tell. Okay, and then your artist statement is the same one we always use. The link is here, so all you have to do is click on this and it will take you to the PDF file, okay? Um, the other thing, here is that character journey worksheet. It says to think about uh, where your project started and where it is now. What is the journey of the items, um, the journey that the items would have taken to get here? So it's almost like the equivalent of you, the products that you chose telling the story, not you. And so in this case, like Alejandro, he used the toothbrushes. It's almost like write the story of the toothbrush and if you don't want to do this on Alejandro's toothbrushes then do it on your artwork what journey did your artwork take and speak and, and write it in such a way that the artwork is speaking okay so if you decide to use cups plates socks uh the socks are gonna speak okay <laughs> so that's what I want to see there all right um and that is it. That is absolutely it. So we did a few things here. We went through our PowerPoint slides together. Uh, and then we also went through our activities together and the project. So if you have any questions, make sure you email me. Let me know that you need to speak to me. Also, just a reminder, um, we, if you do not have these items in, 
um, from the week of the 18th to the 20th. Um, please try your best to get those into me so I can give you a grade on. I'm basically um, grading you on completion because this is just wrapping up what we worked on before spring break. Um, hopefully, God willing, when we return, we can actually present these, okay? Um, so don't get discouraged. We will talk about your artworks before spring break um, that you worked on. But other than that, these follow-up activities are very, very, very important, okay? So this is my first time, uh, let's see, using this. So I am trying to, oh, there we go. Okay, so I stopped sharing my screen. But um, guys, please, I'm by my email during normal school hours. I want you to reach out to me as much as you need to. Um, I'm super excited to see how your projects are gonna come out. Um, remember that installation projects kind of take on the identity to some degree of the environment that it's in. So for example, um, I did an installation um, piece. Actually, I'm gonna share my screen again. So I'm gonna share these links with you. Um, Again, so don't worry if you forget that I said this, but on my YouTube channel, I have a few videos um, down here at the bottom where it says uploads. I don't know if it's gonna say that for you, but I have a video called Maybe It's Love. I have a video called Melting. I have one called Ham From The Soul, Hair Consumer, and yeah, that's it. So these four videos down here are installations that I created. And so in the first installation right here was an installation that I did at a park. Um, the second one was an installation I did on my balcony. Um, this one, I uh, the last two are installations that I created in my living room. One focused on um, creating a hand out of foam core. And the last one focused on using um, hair that I bought from the hair store and installing it on plates like it was food. Okay, so installations can be fun. I want you to have fun with this. Um, this should be probably one of the most fun activities you do during the week. So just make sure you have fun with this and let me know if you need any help. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and there we go. All right, guys. So I love you. Um, I am going to pray and let me know if you need me. Okay. All right. So, Father, we thank you for this day, and we, we just thank you for your many, many blessings. We thank you for life, health, and strength. And, God, we pray right now that you will empower our students to have the the um, perseverance to push through their assignments and the encouragement to um, reach out when they need help. And, um, God, I just pray that they will just have the audacity to pray in a season like this where things just seem definitely off. But God, we trust you. Um, we look to you for our help. We know our help comes from you, God, and we, we thank you so much. We praise your name and we love you. And these are all the things we're going to ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, I will talk to you soon. Uh, have a wonderful, amazing rest of your week.